So I've just finished recording my final lecture of this academic year and I've been reflecting on what's gone well, what hasn't gone well. So here are some thoughts on online learning in 2021. Hello everyone, welcome back to The Attic. My name's Mark Jago, I'm a lecturer in the UK. I've just finished filming my last lecture of this academic year and, you know, I've been thinking about kind of what's gone well, what hasn't gone so well with online learning this year and how do we take those ideas forward into teaching, into learning in the future. So I'm going to have a bit of a, a kind of a reminisce and a bit of a discussion on these issues in this video. If that sounds good to you, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this content, why not subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get updates. So I guess my main overriding feeling of the experience of online learning during COVID, during lockdown is it's just really hard from a lecturer's point of view, getting all of your teaching online. It's just hard, hard, hard. And mostly that's just in terms of the amount of time it takes. I've taught this material a lot in the past for, for 10 years, so all the material is already prepared. It was still a massive, massive effort to get this stuff online. If you're sitting there thinking, oh, you know, a, a 10 minute video, that's going to take like 10 minutes to make, right? Uh, uh, uh. No, it's more like several hours, you know, in terms of how you prep this stuff out for the video, get your room set up and your camera and your lighting, recording it and trying to do enough takes to make sure that there's no mistakes in there, enough material to edit down nicely. Getting it edited, that is such a slow process, going through it step by step and trying to make it kind of smooth and flow taking your final video and uploading it and putting it on the system so that students can access it easily. Each one of these steps takes a long, long time. It's, it's just not like walking into a lecture theatre and looking at your notes and starting talking and when the hour's up, finishing. And, you know, from talking to lots of lecturers who have been doing this stuff online this year, it's not just me that's taking a long time to do this. Pretty much everyone's experience is that Online teaching is really, really time consuming. Everyone's workload has gone up massively this year. So, you know, uh, if you're a lecturer or a teacher watching this, I get it. And I think you've done an amazing job. OK, so going forward, thinking about teaching over the next couple of years, are there any benefits that we've got through doing online lectures. And I'm thinking specifically here about benefits for students. So from the student perspective, are there any benefits to having things online? Well, yeah, obviously I think there are. So one of them is having this content that you can access in a kind of a repeatable way. I think this is really important for subjects that I teach. So I teach a lot of logic where I'm demonstrating like how to do a proof or whatever. What I would often find in class was that I would I would go through it a few times and then in the seminars, students would ask, oh, could you just show us that again? And then people would come to my drop in hour and say, oh, could you show me that? And then someone else would come and say, could you show me that again? And it was like, I just wish I had a video I could just play for you. Or, you know, you could watch the video as many times as you like in your own time. That's the advantage of online teaching. You've got content and you can watch it as many times as you like. And if you find it easy, great. And if you find it difficult, you can go back to that bit and focus in on the things that you're finding difficult. So that's one real advantage going forward with online content. And I guess another one is, again, from a student's point of view, flexibility you can watch this content whenever it suits you. So if you've got um, lectures released every week and a seminar to go to on Friday, um, but you're trying to fit those around like a, a part time job or whatever, you know, you don't have to have them at, at a set time. You could watch the lecture content and think about it. You know, you could fit it in around your your job, your caring responsibilities, your your commute or whatever. OK, so flexibility for students. You know, not every student is a 18 year old living on campus. Um, I would like to see universities be more open, more flexible, allowing people with caring responsibilities, part time studies, 
older learners, you know, being more open to all of these kind of groups. And I think we can do that if we have decent online content. OK, so there are some genuine benefits to having at least some of the lecture content online. Does that mean that we should just give up with the traditional all sitting in a room lecture and just stick it all online? No, I don't think we should do that at all. So I've already mentioned that it's massively time consuming to produce lots of online content. OK, so if you've got a choice between in person and online content, but a lecturer has the same number of hours available to get that content across, they could give a lot more lectures or give more one to one time office hours or whatever if they're giving their lectures in person compared to if they're having to do it all online. So that's an advantage for students. But even setting the the kind of workload issue to one side. I think there are genuine reasons for having in-person lectures. And I think this is around basically the idea of student engagement, the idea that when you are a student, you are part of a learning community, you are part of a university, and that involves being physically on campus at the same time as other students. You see the other students you're learning with, you're sitting with them, you're asking questions with them, you're going for a coffee after and discussing the issues. You know, you don't learn purely in your head on your own. You learn to some extent socially. And part of the experience of being a student is being embedded in this learning environment. I think that is a huge, huge factor of enjoying university and doing well at university. And, you know, online learning through either university modules that are done online or outside of university through YouTube or whatever, this stuff has been around for a long, long time. And it's it hasn't replaced the benefits of university study. OK, so I think going forward, what would I like to see? I would like to see decent online content that students can access whether they're university students or whether they're just learning off their own backs or whatever, I would like to see more of that stuff online, preferably freely available. Would I like to see that replace the traditional university mode of delivery with lectures and seminars in person? No, it should be adding to it rather than taking away from it. So there's another big issue that I've been thinking quite a bit about since the, the start of the, the lockdown, the online teaching. It's quite a sensitive issue. I'm not really sure exactly what I want to say about it, but it's to do with students and parents who are deeply unhappy with the kind of teaching, the kind of online materials that they've been getting. Um, I've seen a lot of, you know, threads on Twitter with, I think, mostly parents saying, oh, you know, I looked at my son or daughter's lecturer on the video the other day and he was, you know, sat in a bedroom and the lighting was bad. I can't believe she's having to pay £9,000 for this. OK, look, I, I get what you're saying, but I think it's misguided for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I think primarily what you're paying for when you go to university is education, not the aesthetics of what your lecturer looks like if you're mostly interested in what things look like rather than the content, you're probably not engaging with your lectures in the most beneficial way for you. But I think more importantly, look at the context, look at the situation. Most lecturers were prepared for teaching in a classroom environment. And then for a lot of people at a very short notice, we were told, OK, take all your teaching online, stick it in videos make it available in a week's time. So I've already gone over what a massively time consuming job that is to do. But also there's the issue of what resources do you have to do that? OK, do you have a TV studio waiting for you there at home? Probably not. Do you even have a decent camera? Do you have a decent lighting setup? Now, look, I was really, really lucky in that in 2019, I thought I'm going to start making online videos and I'd started getting all my gear together and making them. So I had the equipment and I had the space and I had a bit of experience before anyone had even heard of COVID. Most people aren't in that lucky situation. And if I think about me, if this had all hit, you know, five years ago, living in a one bed flat with my partner, I too would be doing all my lectures in the bedroom, on the kitchen table or whatever with bad sound, bad lighting. It's difficult to 
avoid that, right? That's why shooting a film costs so much money, but we don't have any money for doing this. We don't have any time for doing this. We're doing the best we can, okay? And pretty much every lecturer I work with, I know, I've talked to, pretty much all of them have done their absolute best. I think that's the point we need to remember here. So following that issue up, are students getting value for money this year? Well, OK, it's definitely different and it's really hard for students. I believe that education should be free, right? I don't like universities charging fees for us doing what we do. But that's the situation we're in. Successive UK governments have upped fees over the last 20 years. As lecturers, we don't benefit from that. Pretty much as fees go up, lecturers' salaries go down. But if you're strongly of the opinion that fees should all be refunded from teaching throughout the COVID period, basically the consequence of that is going to be loads of academics getting sacked and some universities closing, maybe lots of degree programs, the less popular ones, the less money making ones, they're all going to close down. That means in the future, there's going to be a lot less choice for students and there's going to be real educational downsides to that, okay? The quality of education will go down, the amount of choice that students have. You won't be able to go to the city you want to study in. You won't be able to study necessarily the course that you wanted to study. I'm firmly of the opinion that a healthy, well-working university education system is good for everyone. It's good for students, it's good for lecturers. And even if you don't go to university, you still benefit from that. For instance, think about doctors getting trained up or medical research that's going on at the moment. Everyone benefits from those things. So we need healthy universities. We shouldn't be trying to close them all down. So I touched on the issue of how I believe in free education. That's kind of not an option for university students at the moment. It's one of the reasons why I'm putting this channel together. I'm trying to take the kind of teaching that I do at university and get it out there to as many people as possible, putting it on YouTube completely freely. So you guys can help me out with that. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get notifications. Okay, so there you have some of my kind of jumbled up thoughts of what online learning has been like over the pandemic. If you've got any questions or further thoughts on this, leave me a comment below. Thanks so much for watching this far. I'll see you guys back next time.